Hey, I'm finally back. I had a lot of work the last week, so uh, it took a while to create a new video, but finally I'm back. Uh, so I'm going to make a video about this, and I'm actually going to show you how to recreate this animation in really 10 minutes. Like, you're going to take 10 minutes of your time to recreate this animation, assuming you already have a car and it's already shaded. So we're just going to hop in right into Blender. Um, I thought I'll use a different car for once. This is actually a really nice model. This is an official Ford model from Ford. So I didn't model this model. Um, so this is like top level, so super nice. Uh, so I'm using this for this video. Um, so yeah, if you just start rendering, of course, it's very dark. So the way you would probably do it to recreate a similar scene is using an HDR image. So I'm just going to import one real quick. Um, so it looks pretty cool, um, but yeah. As you can notice, like it's like, where's the environment? <laughs> so uh, first we're just going to add a shadow plane real quick. So just a normal plane, scale it up under the car, then go to the object settings, visibility, turn on shadow catcher, turn everything off except camera visibility. That's very important. Otherwise the white plane starts reflecting in the car. Uh, turn on the background again. I have it off on default, so don't be confused about that. So now you can see it looks pretty good. Uh, you could do a nice render this way, like a still image, but you see like the floor slips under the car, like you probably already know. And also not just that, it's hard to place the car. So it's there's just limited spots you could put this car. You can't really move the camera, you can only move the car. So also in this scene, um, yeah, it's just hard to put the car onto the road, you know? Um, so if you noticed, um, on the sidebar, I've got a new new tool. It's called HDR Maker. Um, I actually got this from the Blender Market store. Um, so we're just gonna hop right into it. Oh, also one thing to note, the three HDRs you just saw, I actually took them. So I actually started taking photos or creating my own HDRs uh, just so I've got more control about my renderings. And you can download five of them for free actually. So I just put a link down in the description. So yeah, just check it out if you want um, and get five free HDRs. They're not perfect, but I think they're pretty cool. So yeah. Uh, so we're just going to go along. So I opened up the tool. We're just going to clean up the scene real quick, delete the HDR, delete the shadow plane. Um, now, like this tool is pretty like self-explanatory. So we're just going to open up a HDR. We're just going to go to roads. You could use any HDR. You could use my HDRs. You could use these HDRs, but we're going to use the one I used in the video. Um, so now we're just going to add it. Now I added a 1K HDR, so if I render, it looks just like it looked before. Nothing too special, yes, but now the magic. There is a button called HDR Projected. So what it does is creating a half dome mesh, it's called. You could model these, but they're super annoying to model. And also, just the model won't be enough. Here there's a lot of sliders, a lot of tools, so it's just super cool. Um, you can just instantly create a pretty good looking environment just based on an HDR. So if you play around with the tool, you're you're gonna quickly realize how quickly you can create these cool environments. Um, so now I'm just gonna place the car real quick in the center on the road on the left side, since I don't know, it just looks better. We're just gonna assume we're in Great Britain or something. Uh, I'm gonna add a camera, just a GZ1, a RZ180. Uh, so looks good. I'm gonna. Uh, add a constraint real quick for the look at or track to. So just add any part of the car, go into Z. I'm just checking real quick. No, I always forget which one it is. Uh, it's Y. So now uh, the track to component works. Perfect. Uh, so now we're just going to move the car back or forward. So you see, this is already half of the animation done. <laughs> That's pretty much almost everything I've done in this video. So um, yeah. Um, also, uh, if you notice, I switched uh, to EV, so the workflow is a bit easier because in cycles would be a little bit annoying. So I'm just going to move the car over so it looks good. Yep. So now we're just going to uh, keyframe the location. So go to the start, keyframe the location, go to the back of the animation. I'm just going to do 100 frames for now. Um, so move the car forward. Yep. Add some more keyframes. Also, don't forget to sharpen the curve with vector. So we want a constant driving car because it's like driving by, you know, like a drive by. Also, if you noticed uh, to see all your keyframes, I uh, just press zero on the number pad. Um, just a little tip. 
So yeah, now the car drives by. Now it's doing a crazy drift though, because uh, the wheels aren't spinning. So we're just gonna make the wheels spin real quick. Um, I'm gonna hop into the dope sheet editor, add a action, uh, open up the action editor, add an, or create an action. Uh, so we don't have to animate all four wheels separately. We're just gonna create one action. So I'm just gonna keyframe the wheel rotation. Jump to the back. I'm just doing a random number, so if you're not as lazy as I am, you should be uh, calculating the speed of the car and measuring the diameter of the wheel and calculating how far the wheel should be rotating per meter. But uh, I definitely don't feel like doing that right now. So I'm just doing it by eye real quick. Um, so I'm just making it faster. Oh, looks okay. Just call it wheel. So now we're just gonna add it to all the other wheels. So they all spin. Nice. So now the car drives, wheel spin, it's not perfect, it's good enough. Um, so yeah, now I'm just gonna hop into the camera. I'm just gonna change the focal length, it's a bit far away still. I'm gonna tilt shift a little bit so the car's a little bit more centered. And I think 100 is even better. So I'm gonna add depth of field, just uh, add any object of the car, it doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna hop into cycles, do a quick render, looks good to me. Yep, not too bad. So now I'm just gonna go over to 8K. Um, then we're also gonna add a object ID since I want a fog look on the car when it's far away. So just gonna yeah select the HDRI background or the half dome, gonna add a pass index of one. So now I'm just gonna hop into my render view, do a quick render. I'm just checking my settings real quick. Look okay. Um, so, looks good. Yeah. Okay, I'm just doing another test real quick. Also realized there is no motion blur. Uh, we definitely need motion blur. Motion blur is a great way of hiding stuff <laughs> that don't look good. Motion blur is the magic solution for good looking renders. <laughs> so definitely turn that on. Um, doesn't look too bad. I'm just gonna open up the compositor. So now real quick, uh, I'm gonna add the object ID mask. I don't know if you like really understood why I did it, but now you will. So I'm just gonna show you real quick what it looks like. So it's really just the white car on a black background as expected um, and what I'm gonna do is use this and I'm gonna mix it onto the car and that's how I'm gonna create a fog only on the car and not on the background just to match up the colors a little bit better and also you could use this mask to um, match up the colors in general so not just add fog but also just match up the image with the car since they're a little bit off. Um, so now we're just gonna turn down the factor. Yeah. So in the beginning of the video we're gonna have a lot of fog, so or not a lot, 0.5 factor fog. Uh, we're gonna keyframe that. Then we're also gonna have 0.1, and in the middle we're gonna have zero fog. So that's pretty much what I did here. So here you see the curve: uh, a lot of fog in the beginning, no fog at the end, uh, in the middle, <laughs> and a lot of fog at the end. So I'm just gonna do a quick render, and now when the compositor smacks in, gives a good fog slap on top, looks good. So in the front there shouldn't be any fog also looks good, so yeah. So this doesn't look as good as what I've made before because I did a lot of tweaking before, but uh, this looks almost as good uh, in compared to the time invested. Like really, this took 10 minutes. Um, so this is what it looks like, this is the final render. Uh, I also noticed when rendering, I should have added a mask on the shadow as well, but whatever. So yeah, I hope that helped. So. This one pretty quick, um, of course using this tool, but this tool is just really good. Uh, so I actually talked to the developer, he was also super nice and I told him that I wanna make a video about it. He was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, here I am <laughs> making a video about this tool. Uh, the link is below, you can check it out. It costs some money, so you have to decide for yourself if it's worth it for you. Uh, I definitely bought it, um, I love it. Uh, so yeah, just check it out or don't check it out, whatever. Otherwise I got the free HDRs ready on my webpage, um, so yeah. That's it for today. Have fun and see you 
hopefully not too much later so i'll try to not make such big breaks anymore uh, but i i'm just working a lot at the moment since i gotta pay rent somehow so that's it for today goodbye <laughs>